Welcome back to the Dr. Doug Show, your resource for bone health, hormone optimization, and health span. So I get asked all the time through our YouTube comments and social media, if I just got diagnosed with osteoporosis, what are the top three things that I should do? People get this diagnosis and they're so worried about, oh my gosh, I'm going to have a fracture. Where do I even start? So today's video is really going to be all about that. So what are the top three things that I would recommend somebody do if they first got diagnosed with osteoporosis? And this isn't one of the three, but the first thing you should do is subscribe to this channel so you can continue to get all of these content um, uh, videos about uh, hormone optimization and about bone health as we continue to dig into the research and find out what works for people in our specific bone optimization practice. So hit that subscribe button and sign up for notifications. Three, two, one. So the number one thing that I would do if I were just diagnosed with osteoporosis is to learn more information because typically that diagnosis comes along with say a T score from a DEXA scan and your doctor may even be talking to you in person or sometimes you just get a phone call and say, Hey, your T score is negative 2.7 and you have osteoporosis and uh, this is a drug option for you. That's typically how it goes. And that's what I hear all the time. But these are the questions you should be asking yourself, which is why am I losing bone? Do I have osteoporosis because I'm rapidly losing bone? Do I have osteoporosis because I didn't have good bone to start with and I'm having a hard time building bone? If your information came from a DEXA, do you have the possibility of getting more information like actually using a REMS, uh, which is an ultrasound that can help determine what kind of bone density and quality you have? Uh, did your doctor recommend getting any blood labs to a, a rule out why you uh, may or may not be losing bone rapidly, uh, but also bone turnover markers? Are you again in this phase of uh, rapid bone loss? Are you not building bone? Do you have good balance? How are you imbalanced? Because people with osteoporosis generally are or they were imbalanced at some point. I have an entire video on the, the bone turnover markers, so uh, definitely consider that. To learn more information like this, I would say go to our masterclass or our free Bone Foundations course. They're both free. They both uh, really walk you through all of those things. So number one, find out more information before you do number two. So number two things that I would do is a thing that I would actually not do, which is don't say yes to drugs right out of the gate. Let me be very clear here. There is a time and a place for pharmaceutical management of osteoporosis. I really, um, I hate seeing both sides of this conversation in our comments and on, on Facebook groups and, and social media where there are a lot of people who are very afraid of the drugs and rightfully so. They have some pretty nasty potential side effects, but there are also people that would really benefit from the drugs that are not on the drugs because they're listening to people who may not benefit from the drugs who are afraid of the drugs. And so you get this, this really big social pressure actually on either side of that equation. And I think we really need to understand for each of us, what is our specific need for pharmaceuticals if it exists at all? But let me give you some examples because these are some like really common things that I see. So this first one, um, this is just fictitious, but I see this example all the time. So let's say a woman in her early 50s. So she's 52 years old. She got that DEXA T score of negative 2.7. Doctor calls her and says, hey, your hips are at risk of fracture. Your T score is low. You have osteoporosis. You need to be on Fosamax or Reclast or whatever bisphosphonate. Take your pick. And the doctor uh, doesn't really offer anything outside of that. Now, is that wrong? No, it's not. Because from a uh, physician perspective, you have a disease called osteoporosis. They have a solution, even though it's a short-term solution, but it's still a solution that could help to slow down bone loss. But is that actually your problem? And your doctor doesn't know that, and you don't know that, but that is the standard of care. So don't get mad at your doctor for offering that because that's what they're supposed to do. But let's take it a next step and say, okay, well, for someone who's 52, has a T-score that's in the osteoporosis range, but isn't extremely low, and, and people grade that in various ways, but you could say, you know, negative three, negative four, or whatever. Depending on your fracture risk, you likely have, at this age, a lot of runway to improve your bone before you're going to break your hip. Now, I cannot guarantee that for anybody, and nobody can. We don't know when that fracture is gonna come, but the drugs, specifically uh, bisphosphonates, have a short window in which you can use them. 
if you're starting at 52 and you can use a drug for three years, maybe five years, what are you going to do when you're 57? And so this is where I feel like we have an opportunity for a patient in this age group to be very aggressive with nutrition, with exercise, with impact training that's appropriate for this person, potentially having a discussion around hormone replacement. Maybe they didn't know they had osteoporosis if they had that initial discussion, and maybe that the risk benefit conversation is different now, right? This is gonna be different for everybody. Not all of those things are necessary, but again, I would ask your doctor who's prescribing the drug, what's the long-term plan here? If I hop on a bisphosphonate now, what am I going to do in five years? And if you're in your early 50s, then that is a big question. And the answer might be, well, then you can go on Prolia and then you can use an anabolic drug and you can start chaining these things together and you can do that, but all of them come with potential risks. So why not do a natural version first? Why not try if you have time and runway? Why not try to improve bone health naturally through all those things that I just mentioned. And again, you can look at the, the entire list. There are dozens and dozens of things that could potentially improve bone health. So why not implement some of those, follow yourself over time and see if you're improving your bone. So another example, and this is on the other end of the spectrum. Let's say it's that same 52 year old woman. She has a T-score of negative 2.7, but the difference is maybe she hadn't gone through menopause yet. Maybe she was still cycling, but she has breast cancer. Now, this is unfortunate, but let's say she has breast cancer, she's going through treatment, she's on an aromatase inhibitor, which will block estrogen. This person is going to lose bone very rapidly. We can predict what those bone turnover markers are going to look like. They're going to be not very much bone building and a whole lot of bone loss. This is also a patient who, although it's controversial, but for the most part, it's not going to be a candidate for hormone replacement. They're not going to want this person to have estrogen because of the cancer. You are losing some of the biggest tools. Now, can you still lift weights? Sure. Can you do impact training? Of course. Can you optimize your nutrition? Of course. But is it going to be enough to offset the rapid bone loss that you're going to see on a drug that eliminates estrogen from someone that had estrogen? Uh, and the answer is probably not. You know, this has not been clearly studied, but that is a, a really, really big lift to do through natural means, uh, you know, supplements, um, exercise and nutrition. So this is a case where if you know that you have a potentially uh, defined timeline of when you're going to be on a drug, we know that you're not going to get your estrogen back. Likely this will be the end of, of your cycling, but you could potentially use a drug short term. And again, asking that same question, what is the long-term outlook here? Well, you're going to be on an aromatase inhibitor, let's say for three years. That's a common thing. Uh, maybe you could use a bisphosphonate for those three years, help prevent that rapid bone loss because you're going to lose, you know, 10, 15% of your bone density in those three years. So maybe you can prevent that, keep it flat, or maybe just lose one or 2%, like somebody who is naturally going through menopause over the course of that same time frame. And then you had a, you had a much, much better starting point. And then you have a fighting chance to potentially stay off of those drugs in the long term. So just another example where uh, somebody who, if, if that 52-year-old with breast cancer was on a Facebook group and everybody was talking about all the risks of the drugs, and then they decide, hey, that drug's not for me, but I'm going to treat this breast cancer because I have to, otherwise it will kill me, they are at risk of uh, making a bad decision there and uh, potentially losing a lot more bone than they have to. Let's look at one more case here. Uh, and I, I could do this all day long, but I, I see so many people that have so many questions about drugs. Uh, but here's another case. Let's talk about a very young person. Now, uh, this person, I'm thinking just a 40 year old, right? So this is a 40 year old. Now this is way too young for most people to even think about osteoporosis. But I will tell you that if you know anybody that has a risk factor for osteoporosis, which is almost everybody, they should be screened because I see 40 year olds, 30 year olds, even 20 year olds with osteoporosis all the time. So let's say, for example, this is a 40 year old, same T-score, negative 2.7 their doctor calls, hey, you have osteoporosis, you should take a bisphosphonate drug. I'm not kidding, I hear this all the time. <laughs> doctor says you should take this bisphosphonate drug for a 40 year old. Again, that's the only tool they really have. And they've been taught that osteoporosis is not reversible. So what else are they going to do? So I get that. Depending on the starting point, depending on other things, would I ever recommend a bisphosphonate for a 40 year old? I'd want to know why they're losing bone. Are they rapidly losing bone? Are they that same breast cancer patient? Maybe. But for the most part, we are not going down this pathway because again, unless you have a, a very high risk of fracture, meaning your T-score is negative three and negative four, you have poor bone quality, previous fracture, et cetera, et cetera. Unless you have a very high risk, you have runway. You have an opportunity to improve bone 
retest, make sure you're headed in the right direction before you fracture. So why not do that naturally first? All right. So the younger you get, the likely the more runway you have. And again, though, if you have severe risk of fracture, then we could potentially go another route. We could use an anabolic drug rather than an anti-resorptive drug, right? Rather than a bisphosphonate, consider using something uh, like Forteo or Timlos, you know, something where you can help build up bone rapidly, get them out of that hole, again, with a clear time frame. I'm gonna use this drug for one year or two years, but while I'm doing that, I'm gonna put all of those things into play so that when I come off of that drug, maybe I don't need to stay on another drug forever. Because again, at 40, you don't even have a choice. It's not even a thing. And then actually, I do have one more uh, case that just popped into my mind because uh, I hear this too. So let's say uh, somebody uh, is 75 years old and they just got screened for the first time, uh, maybe at 75. Uh, or maybe they have been following their T-scores and now they're, you know, they used to be not so bad, but now they're, you know, they just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse. But let's say this 75-year-old has pretty uh, low T-scores, say like negative 3.5. Let's say they're not really able to do resistance training. They're pretty fragile. You know, maybe they're spending, you know, not a lot of time on their feet. They're using a walker or a cane and uh, they're not able to do, you know, impact training. They're not able to lift heavy. At 75 years out, if they haven't been on hormone replacement, 20 years out or 25 years out, they're probably not going to be a candidate for hormone replacement. So then we start losing some of the tools that would be available to us. So then is this person a, a candidate for pharmaceuticals to prevent bone loss? Yeah, probably. Right. Would Prolia for the next 10 years be good for a frail 75 year old? Maybe. I do see 75 year olds that have the capacity though. And so this is where the, the challenge comes in and people say, well, chronologically you're 75 years old. I have 75 year old uh, women and men uh, that are lifting heavy, doing impact training. You know, they're going to Austria strong. They're on the vibration plate. They're doing all the things uh, and they can do it great. You know, they're changing their diet. So I'm not necessarily worried about that chronologic age, but physiologically, biologically, how old is that 75 year old? And that might also be a circumstance where, hey, maybe the drug actually does make sense. So again, I hope that demonstrates that there's a time and a place for pharmaceuticals. Always ask the question, and this goes back to why we're putting this point in here. Always ask the question, what's the long-term plan? What's my five-year plan, my 10-year plan, my 20-year plan? And of course, depending on your starting point, um, you could talk about a 30-year plan, a 40-year plan, right? If you're in your 50s, lifespan expectancy is 85. What's your 35 year plan for your osteoporosis? So it really puts the drugs that are available for, you know, three, five, 10 years uh, into a different context. All right. And if your doctor says, don't worry about that, this is the only option you have. Osteoporosis isn't reversible. It's time for another opinion. Before we get to number three, let's talk about a couple of options because this is what this whole thing is about. I mentioned earlier our, our uh, masterclass. So our bone, bone health masterclass is a, uh, an opportunity for you to watch me walk through all of the things that we're actively doing with our patients uh, to help reverse bone loss. A lot of those things can be done on your own. It's also an opportunity for you to ask a, a couple of questions. We usually have about five minutes in there for questions. So if you haven't been through that, it's totally free. Look for the link in the description. Uh, and if you're listening to this as a podcast, just go to drdouglucas.com and you'll find it. We also have our Bone Foundations course uh, available in both of those places. Bone Foundations is that uh, same masterclass, but expanded. Over 16 modules, uh, associated workbook, uh, access to the free uh, digital ebook. All of those things are available for free. So again, look for the links, go to drdouglucas.com, find all that stuff so that you can get the resources that you need. All right, so what's number three? The, num the number three thing that I would do if I were just diagnosed with osteoporosis? And the answer is I would get after my lifestyle. I would get after my nutrition. I would get after the training part. Learn what impact is appropriate for you, if any. Learn about what other things that are associated with improving bone health that are, are right for you, that you have access to. So that could be osteogenic loading through OsteoStrong. It could be a whole body vibration plate, either at home or at the gym. You know, what things do you have access to that you can start to plug into your diet? Because what I hear all the time is people say, well, I got this diagnosis and yeah, I'm gonna take this supplement and yeah, I guess I'll retest in a couple of years. No. Is not that easy. Osteoporosis is not easy. So you have to get after it. You have to change your lifestyle. Focus on the nutrition. Listen to the nutrition talk we have on YouTube and our Bone Foundations course. We go over it for an extended period of time. But in short, it is a, a nutritional approach that's anabolic. It's protein forward, preferably from animal sources. Or if you choose to eat vegetable sources, follow a vegan or vegetarian diet, be very, very clear and intentional about your amino acid uh, content, where you're getting those things from. 
um, and make sure that you're getting adequate protein. Look for all those resources if you're needing it. Again, from a training side, lifting heavy, as heavy as you can, but remember, don't get hurt. That's our number one rule. Um, but lift as heavy as you can, get stronger, focus on muscle mass, your bone will follow. So that's the third thing that I would do is just get after it. Be aggressive because this is a big deal. You do not want to suffer from a hip fracture or spine fracture, et cetera. So those are my top three. I hope those all make sense. Um, please remember that osteoporosis is reversible. We see it every day, but it's easier for some people than it is for others. And so you hear these success stories that people tell me on Instagram all the time, and I love it. People say, I reversed my osteoporosis by doing you know, X, Y, and Z, and that's fantastic. It is easy for some people, but it's not easy for everyone. Uh, and so make sure you're monitoring, make sure you're getting your labs, make sure you know what's happening with your bones, because if you're just doing something uh, that you think is helping because somebody told you that it would, uh, and it's not, then you are losing ground and you could be losing ground very, very quickly. So I hope that helps. That's all we have for today. So remember that you are created for greatness. So seek optimal, not average. Don't be afraid to be extraordinary because you are, and that's what it takes. I'll see you next time. This presentation is for general informational purposes only, does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this presentation are at the user's own risk. The content in this presentation is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.